All right, guys, what's going on? Coach Joe here at Elite FTS with my man, Sam. We put out a ton of videos during this collab with myself and Juji and Dave at Elite FTS. Sam's been helping coaching. Uh, we put out videos that were just crazy leg training. We did some corrective stuff uh, with my pelvis and my hips that you guys should check out. And the one thing that I noticed about this gym is it has more barbells than any gym I think I've ever been to. There literally is an entire wall of barbells that goes around this whole gym you guys are seeing right now in the b-roll so i had to ask sam if he could only pick three barbells out of this barbell arsenal yep. which ones would he pick so we have three barbells we're going to dive into each of them you know why he likes using them when we would use them and i'm really excited about this as a gym owner these are things that i love to learn about uh, these are cool tools to use depending on where you're at in your training or uh, what you're trying to do with your training so let's get right to it guys all right sam what, what the heck is this thing is this axle bar this is an axle bar but the cool thing is it has knurling on it it's huh. like a normal axle bar except way cooler this even looks even thicker this is like a like a two inch diameter yep looks like yep it's about a two inch diameter barbell which for most people is going to feel absolutely insane bonkers right so as a strongman competitor, you've pressed with axles before, right? Mm -hmm. You're very familiar with an axle, but for most people, an axle is just absolutely unbelievable to use, right? So a couple different reasons you would utilize an axle, especially this one. A lot of times people get who bench press a lot tend to have a lot of wrist pain. Mm -hmm. When you're utilizing an axle, you can actually open up into that suicide grip or thumbless grip that you want and take a lot of pressure off of the wrist itself. A lot of the times when we have a thinner barbell in our hands, we have a tendency of really over gripping. And what that does is it puts a lot of tension and a lot of uh, stress on that wrist. So utilizing an axle like this is a great way to kind of get a little bit of a variation in your training so that you can make sure you can, again, the last few days have all been about pain mitigation and fatigue yep. mitigation. This is a great way to still bench if you're having wrist, potentially elbow issues, and you wanna just kind of change things up just a little bit. Also, too, could we use this uh, for any sort of grip training? Like, is this going to help uh, make our grip better, you think? Absolutely, yeah. So, axle deadlifts, right? Yeah, yeah. A great way to train your grip is to utilize a thicker bar, right? So, if you were to utilize this for axle deadlifts, again, if you're a strongman competitor, you're going to find this in a contest that you'll need to get used to. But if you are a non-strongman athlete and you want to just, again, vary your training, try deadlifting with one of these. Mm -hmm. Get an overhand grip on this and hold on for dear life because this thing is absolutely gonna be fighting to get ripped out of your hands with gravity and the weight of the bar. The other thing, guys, too, is it makes it more difficult because uh, there's no bearings. It doesn't spin at all. It's a fixed barbell, okay? So if you're looking at ways to play with those different training variables, okay, this is gonna be harder because the bar isn't spinning, it's not rotating, it's obviously thicker. Mm -hmm. What I really like about this bar is this knurling. So we have this center patch here, which is just great uh, for keeping it you know, tight to our, our collarbone and for pressing, all right? And at the same time here, we have you know, side knurling marks just to know obviously where our hands need to go. So if you guys are used to using a bare axle bar, sometimes it's a pain in the butt where there is no center mark unless you put one there. And there also probably isn't knurling so for me, this is something I would love to have in my gym for those extra added bonuses. Absolutely. And another way that this bar makes things much more difficult for pressing, especially on the bench press, is because it is thicker, mm -hmm. you don't get the same amount of neural drive and you yeah. don't get the same amount of squeeze. So you'll notice, you're like, oh, wow, that you would think it'd be easier to, holy thunder, Thor is upon us. <laughs> so. If you're utilizing this for bench press, you'll notice that you won't be able to do as much weight with a thicker bar than you would with a normal bar. Love it. So let's move on to bar number two. All right, guys, bar number two. This is one of my favorite bars. I actually do not own this bar, so I need to get one ASAP. Maybe I'll leave with one today. <laughs> but every time I travel to a gym that has this barbell, I always love using it for my training. So I want Sam to dive into what this bar is exactly and the many uses that we can get out of this bar. Oh yeah, there are so many to, where do I start with? So this is the American Grip Camber Bar from Elite FTS. This is one of our best selling bars. It is one of my personal favorites because again, it allows me to put that variation in my training, that variation into my pressing, overhead, even rows, right? This bar has so many options, it's totally ridiculous. So let's kind of go over it. If you're not aware, this bar has a camber on it. 
What that means is that there's two modes that you can utilize this bar in. You can utilize this bar in the cambered mode, which increases your range of motion with the bar. So now your hands are actually gonna be traveling farther and it's gonna increase the range of motion of the press. But you can also flip it over and now, when you're pressing it in this mode, which I, I think is about a one and a half board, if you're an old school power lifter, this decreases your range of motion. So it allows you to get more of that emphasis on the triceps, or if you have an injury, this allows you to stay out of that range of your shoulder that may kind of make it a little bit finicky. Not only that, we have different grips. We have so many grips to choose from, and this is so many different variations of the same bar. So, very simple, we have grips where your hands are one direction and then you can flip the bar over and now you're more externally rotated which allows you to put that emphasis of your pressing on different muscles as well. So this bar, I don't even know how many combinations, variations you can do, but you can use it for pressing, you can use it for rowing, you can utilize this for curls even. I know, like look at the gun show over here, loving the curls. But the idea is simple. If you own a garage gym or if you own a gym and you just want to get the most bang for your buck, a bar like this is a great way to do that because you have so many types of variations you can utilize. Like I said guys, this is one of my favorite uh, bars. So you guys are kind of watching through the B-roll of us using this in different ways and variations, but probably one of the best bang for your buck bars that you can get. Uh, obviously Elite FTS sells this bar. So if you guys are interested, go over there and check out their website to purchase it. But like I said, this is like one of the staple bars that I need to get for my gym. And every time I travel, it's, if it has a, this bar in their gym, I'm using it all the time because I absolutely love it. One of my favorite variations is just using that camber to get a deeper range of motion. As you guys know, I'm a full ROM kind of guy for the most part. So I love getting you know, that full range of motion and that camber allows me to do that. So, uh, you know, love this bar. Sam, thank you so much for introducing me no to all the different things we can do with it. And we have one more bar that I'm kind of scared to use, so let's get to that one. I don't know if you guys hear, but Thor has blessed us with his presence because he knows this bar can only be held by the, the true god of thunder, which is Sam today, all right? <laughs> and maybe me, I don't know. So Absolutely. what the heck kind of bar is this? So guys, this is a bamboo bar. It's actually made out of bamboo. And I know what you're gonna think, bamboo is very, very light. I was and thinking pandas right away. This does look like a delicious panda snack. Yes. But the reason that this bar is made out of bamboo is because it's used in, it's called chaos training or stability training, right? Chaos training sounds pretty cool. What you do, you hang weights off of it. And what that does is that increases the instability of this bar and it forces your body to stabilize more and more in various positions of your press. Okay. So this bar itself is, is the most deceiving bar that we have in this gym. And we have over 280 bars. There's a lot in here. 280 bars, and this is the one that gives me the most anxiety. Oh, lovely. So, how Dave has programmed this bar for us in the past is you load weights on with, specifically, uh, Elite FTS bands. Load weights on with a band, and what they do is they hang. Not only do they just hang, they also bounce. And when these weights bounce, that force is, is put right into your stabilizers, for example, on the top of your bench press. So, a dastardly thing that Dave would do, and as you know, Dave is fairly dastardly. Sick man. Sick, sick man. He will get you in your bench press position, have you unwrap this bar, puts a song on, and you have to hold that bar out for that entire song. Is it Taylor Swift? Usually it's something pretty pretty similar to okay. that. Christina Aguilera. That's more my, the more my girl. Yeah, yeah. yeah she's, right. she's fantastic. But the idea is simple. Because the bar weighs so little, any sort of force generated farther out on the bamboo bar is going to produce that whip and that bend that, again, you will have to stabilize as part of that press. It is one of the most deceiving bars that we have. It's the lightest bar, and it's the one that I want to use the least. All right, so quick, we're gonna cue the Christina Aguilera. I'm gonna get on this thing. I'm not gonna do any B-roll. You're gonna see it's live. I've never touched this bar before. Let's see what happens. Oh. So he's gonna unrack it. Oh yeah. Just gonna hold it. Let's, can, oh yeah. I can see how this would become problematic. Yep, like a genie in a bottle. The genie is gonna <laughs> escape out of the bottle. So if he was gonna hold this for a whole song, he would notice it, the farther along he gets, the more difficult it is to stabilize. But what I want him to do is I want him to come down slow, slow, slow. 
Again, forcing him to stabilize throughout the whole range of motion of that press. And as you see, the bar weighs about 15, 10, 15 pounds, and we only have 50 pounds on this bar, and this big, huge jack gorilla is shaking like a leaf. Whoa. Uh, pretty crazy, right? Yeah, does it ever stop shaking? Uh, if you stop it from shaking, it will stop shaking. I don't, has anyone ever done that? Uh, not really. So this is probably one of the, we don't have the really low hanging weights. The lower the weight is, the more whip and bounce there is on it. But we do have the weights at the farthest end of this bar. So the farther out you go, the more whip and the more instability that there'll be. So for someone like Joey, I would probably have maybe another 25 on each side and it'll really get that party started. But as you can see, he's never used the bar before and it is such a different experience. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, and I'm a press specialist, so I can see myself using this to help stabilization of the shoulders and just a different variation, right? Uh, so if I can control weight better that's shaking, it's probably gonna be a lot easier to handle weight that's not shaking, right? Am I correct? Absolutely, 100%. <laughs> and not only that, like Joey said, he can do that overhead too. Yeah, yeah, this is gnarly. I like it. So there you guys have it. Those are Sam's three favorite barbells if he had to choose out of the over 150 plus barbells that are here that he would recommend uh, for you guys to purchase or try or have in your gym. They all are unique in their own way and different, which I like a lot. Uh, so if you guys are interested, head over to Elite FTS, obviously peruse their catalog of barbells. I know I'm going to do that. Uh, and I also am just really grateful to be here with this whole trip and learning things. And the main thing I took away from this trip is how many ways we can change the variables in our training, right? Uh, my mind has just been open to different things such as tempo, right? Uh, literally how we are having an angle of a machine, right? The other day we had a GHD that was propped up and not propped up and, and all different variables, barbells, bands, chains, you name it. So uh, when you're training for the long haul, it's important to have variation uh, for obviously training purposes, but also mentally, right? It's fun when you change things up. And if you're in it for the long haul, you need to have fun and enjoy your training. And sometimes it's as simple as playing with a bamboo bar. So once again, thank you so much, Sam, for uh, being on the channel and giving us you know, your take of these barbells. Uh, I really appreciate you guys watching the videos and this collaboration. It was a blast for me. Hopefully you guys can tell, even though I was gonna die in the light training video, which is linked above. So make sure you give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, go ahead over to Lead FTS and Sam, check out all the guys on the team, their page, their channel, subscribe. And uh, until then guys, stay Lead Mean Track Machine. Peace.